Since man was able to twist iron and other metals into tools and works of art, there were and still are stones that help hold up the foundation of the world. Some called them magicians or alchemist, however if you asked them what they were many would say they are slaves to men. Timmy was overtaken by the splendor of curiosity, the stone and metal work and the time that went into building such a place as the notorious sanatorium that had infected our minds and caused our feet to move around dark hallways and sometimes making us open doors we should have left closed. We are mere mice chewing on the strings of the fates, sometimes to fates leave out a few morsels of food for us hungry mice and sometimes they wrap that food in a story. Even though the sun was at its highest point in the day, the sanatorium was dark. Somewhere in the darkness Timmy went one way and I went another, this is when I found the chute, at the time I didn't know what it was. Only that it was a rather long hallway that was wet and dark with a light at the end, looking back it was poetic in a way. After all there was a light at the end of a tunnel at least this one anyway. As I reached the end, being startled by the occasional bat or some other creature that had decided it was best to live in the dark. For some time no one came to the shell of a building that now stands, ghost stories had a way of bringing people, a growing number of people who thought they might just catch a glimpse of a gaseous thing roaming the hallways. But as the years went by and more and more of the weekend adventures, the growing number of teenager who sided with dark came back with grey hair, the sanatorium was once again purged from the minds of the youth that is until ghost became cool again. Ghost stories don't die they rest and come back after they have gathered their armies. Sometimes the ill-fated individual like myself will see or find something. My hammer. The light at the end of the tunnel revealed, what appeared to be an old riverbed, maybe an old road. That brought me to an old wooden shack that strangely reminded me of a family cabin I was stuck in as a child. Something told me to scan the area with my metal detector, after all it gave me a chance to wait for Timmy. At first I just found bits of junk, and then I found a small jar full of gold crowns from teeth. Whenever I found something, I would dig it and set it beside the hole in the off case I missed something. As I moved closer to the shack, the detector locked on to something big. After finding the creepy gold crowns, I thought maybe I found something really cool. That's when I found my hammer. As my fingers wrapped around the handle I had flashes and visions of a man pounding bits of metal into nails and using them nails to seal coffins. And then I had other visions, each time I held the hammer. The hammer was connected to the nails that went in the coffins and the nails were connected with the dead. It was a virtual Encyclopedia Britannica of the dead, their life and memories up to a point. As I held this tool, I wondered if the blacksmith experienced the flashes, of each person he entombed? For years in the back of magazines I have read stories about objects having some type of link between the owners. I had other questions, was I crazy? Had the Kentucky heat boiled my brain? Is this the memories of the dead or does this thing trap the souls of the dead? As I looked down at the strange designs, more and more questions I would never find answers for bubbled away in my mind. For a moment I thought about something Timmy told me, the highest number of deaths in a single year at Waverly Hills was 152. The worst time for deaths was at the end of the Second World War when troops were returning from overseas with very advanced tuberculosis cases. Some independent researchers suggest that since 162 people died at Waverly Hills in 1945, the highest total number of deaths possible over 50 years was approximately 8,212 or more and they didn't list the deaths of children because it offended the public. For a moment I thought was this hammer the personal hell of 9,000 or more people. And then Timmy walked up and asked me what I was doing. I responded, looking at a hammer. Can I see it he asked. No. It's my hammer and I quickly shoved it into my bag. What's next? I asked. Smiling he said lunch. As we had our little picnic, we decided not to set up camp because a storm was coming. 
he said we would have to stay in the sanatorium. As he said this I looked at him like he had lost his mind and he could see this. Carefully reassuringly saying, I found a nice place, you're going to love it. It's where they used to treat people with water. Hydrotherapy I think they call it. Down the hall in that wing is where they would strap down the crazy ones. Punching me on the shoulder, laughing as he did. It's going to be epic.